I have just reviewed the Elite X, the Pro X, and it comes to sense and logic that we would just dive in into the review of the Z790 Hours Master X, the motherboard which has settled arguments in terms of specs, looks, and face crunching. Because yes, this thing is very, very heavy. Now, fun fact for you, no matter how small your penis is, jogging uh, during an airpiece outbreak can be still uh, quite the discomfort. A friend told me. Ours is a more bombastic premium lineup of motherboard and the master where things start to really get serious in terms of features and pricing. And the new X series is a second wave of Z790 powered motherboard this year and were released not only to cater to the Intel's brand new 14th generation of core processors, but also to introduce new features which were initially reserved for 2024. So yeah, kind of exciting. Now the Master X goes head to head Head in terms of competition against the ROG uh, Strix E-Series as well as the MSI Z790 Carbon, both of which I have reviewed and you should be checking if you haven't done so yet. Now, starting with the obvious. The Master X still features that very premium 8 PCB layers which ensures that near to perfect PCI signal insulation, an improved VRM heat dissipation and that longer lifespan it has built its repute on. In addition, we do have a rather premium backplate protecting the many soldered points you will find there and adding to the board robustness. Clearly, we are way beyond covering the fundamentals, uh, both in terms of solidity and longevity. We are in the presence of a very luxurious piece of tronics. Design-wise, while the Master X is a good-looking fella, it brings back this play between mineral blues and space grays I so loved last year. Gigabyte also demonstrates a perfect finish control through its sand brushing techniques, its cross-componentry laser drawing, and its precise angular cuts. The cooling blocks are much larger and taller than ever seen before, giving a topographic, mountainous feel to the board, which works quite well. Now, RGB-wise, we do have a beautiful, precise, homogeneously lit Aros logo scene, which does reinforce that premium feel. And if that was not enough, because it never is, we get our fusion connectors for a maximal level of satisfaction, because let's be honest, if you are watching this, this is the only thing in life which will keep you satisfied. Now, CPU socket-wise, well, we are witnessing the last appearance of the very worthy LGS 1700 socket, which did introduce PCIe 5 and DDR5 standards to our motherboard, and worth noting, did last much longer than its predecessor, since it is the only CPU socket in a decade to support not one, two, but three generation of Intel processors. Well done, you little LGS 1700. Now, more interestingly, VRM-wise, well, we, we have a very near identical power solution than seen on its Z790 Hours Master predecessor, meaning an imposing 23 105 amps direct phases solution organized in a 20 plus 2 plus 1 configuration. That is 2100 CPU centric amps here to impregnate your CPU with severe overclocking juice. And I need to say uh, that there is nothing Intel will ever be able to produce, uh, I mean, uh, up to the 14th generation of core processors, which will be able to shame this power delivery. Um, I love the fact that we have 105 amps PSPs. I mean, this is a very top of what the industry can produce today. Love the fact that we have 210 amps almost dedicated to RAM clocking and overclocking. All that is beyond fancy. What I do love less though, and Gigabyte should really listen to this bit. We have two power stages placed and hidden under what could be the hottest component in our board, meaning the CPU connected, PCIe 5.0 enabled, M.2 solicited drive, thermal floor padding. And power stages can get really hot, and even though there is only two of them, I still feel very uncomfortable to see the motherboard design team going that direction. 
to be fair, I did not detect any kind of thermal bleeding, even through heavy overclocking, uh, um, that would affect your M.2 solid state drive storage. But just the fact of thinking that it is okay is a bad precedent. I mean, imagine if they start to put in three, four, five of them. So yeah, uh, nothing critical here, but I really see this as a design flaw, which gives me a perfect transition for uh, uh, taking a look at the VRM cooling components, which in a short word is nothing but the best. We have this exceptionally premium pipe linked to stages VRM blocks. The main one is this rare fin array block topped by a massive extended plate. Now, having a fin array cooling solution is the most expensive solution and only Gigabyte has been using it so far and reserved on their more premium motherboard. It does provide an obscene amount of radiating area and have a much higher heat dissipation ratio than the more classic heat blocks. In short, absolutely delighted to see it here. In contrast, the side block is a no less impressive aluminum block, which does feature radiating winglets protubating on both of its sides for an extended radiating era as well. Both blocks are linked by 8mm wide copper pipe to ensure an homogeneous heat spread. It also features a double contact design providing an intimate thermal padded heat relief to both PSPs and chokes alike. Now, I do want to know the thick thermal pad sandwich between the back PCB and the back plate, which are here to provide an additional heat relief on the power stages solder points. An absolute masterclass uh, in terms of ERM cooling design. It, it does an absolute gorgeous job at keeping this army of 105 amps power stages cool at all time with an i9 14900k continuously running at 5.9 gigahertz for a full synthetic stress test hour both blocks stayed nicely close to the 50 degrees celsius symbolic bar which again coming from a 20 plus 105 amps psps and an extravagantly demanding processor is extremely impressive overall i am giving the master x vrm a uh, 8 out of 10 score i was going to give it 9 but I'm detecting one design point uh, for adding the power stages below the CPU linked M.2 solid state drive. It is hard to know what this will entail on the long run, the, the power stages under the connector, and I just find the move uh, to be a very poor precedent. Overall, very, very happy, but yeah, about that I'm not. And obviously I do not expect you to pair this motherboard with anything else than an i7K class processor, more more logically was an i9, uh, anything less would be a waste of your money. Now, RAM-wise, the Master X supports 192GB of DDR5 RAM organized in a dual-channel configuration, clockable up to well, a not very realistic 8266MHz. And the reason why I say it's not very realistic is that by design, you cannot achieve anything beyond 6.5GHz with a fully populated dual channel uh, uh, configuration. Now, you might be able to get closer to seven gigahertz with a single stick, but with anything more, and with the current sticks on the market, I, I don't know how you're gonna get to those eight gigahertz. Great future proofing because, as I said, you will get sticks who's gonna get to those kind of speeds probably in the next year or so. So on that side, you're getting a pretty good future proofing deal. Other than that, now, PCIe export-wise, well, our Master X shows three 16-slot expansion ports running at different speeds. As usual, the closest one to the processor is the only one able to deliver 16 PCIe 5.0 enabled uh, PCIe lanes, meaning that this is where you'd want to place your GPU for nominal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. Now, the two remaining PCIe exports are a bit more deceptive, I want to say. They both show a 16-slot configuration and are metallically reinforced, suggesting a multiple GPU support, which would go hand-in-hand -hand with both the master pricing and its long history of dual GPU support. But, unfortunately, nothing could be more further than the truth. The metallic reinforcements here are strictly for show. They are both running at a very slow legacy PCIe 3.0 standard, giving, in best cases, a cruelly slow 4 gigabyte per second worth of bandwidth. Absolutely inadequate for any kind of, of modern 
you know, video card, especially for the one you'd use for such a premium motherboard anyways. No, here clearly Gigabyte uh, did try to advertise something they could not provide and quite disappointingly so. On the good side though, we do have a PCIe slot unlocking mechanism, which will ease your GPU upgrading adventures a feature i not only love but adore now overall i am kind of disappointed to see such a great brand using this kind of cheap tactics and performance wise we are finding ourselves with expansion abilities of a z790 entry level nothing more now storage wise our board shows five M.2 solid state drive connectors. Only the closest one to the CPU is PCIe 5.0 enabled and can potentially fix at a blazing fast 128 gigabit per second worth of data swap and precisely why it has received the bulk of the cooling focus here and for good reasons. On top of dealing with a notoriously hot component, PCIe 5 enabled sticks are hot, the cooling system has to account for the additional heat bleeding of those two VRM power stages uh, we talked about earlier and result is a massive and I don't think I have ever seen one that big three or four centimeter tall heat block in addition it does benefit from a dual thermal padded treatment which all work rather well at keeping the stick cool at all time the four other connectors are all running four lanes at PCI 4.0 standard which is plenty fast and plenty hot as well. Luckily, they also all benefit from the double thermal padded treatment and are cooled by a single large and thick, really thick, single heat plate. Worth noting, all of our M.2 solid state drives do come with a screwless locking latch, which in my opinion has become the most sturdy and easy to use in the industry today. Now, Obviously, coming from a Z790 powered motherboard and with a limited amount of PCIe 5.0 lanes available here, we do have the same PCIe bifurcation scheme we have seen on the Pro X, meaning that if you do dare to use a PCIe 5.0 enabled connector, the GPU expansion slot will see its bandwidth divided by two, which is the price to pay uh, to use a PCIe 5.0 enabled stick on a Z790 powered uh, uh, motherboard in general. But finally, and to end this on a more positive note, um, we do have the screwless plate locking mechanism introduced on the X refresh lineup of motherboard, which is a sizable innovation and which I totally fell in love with. Now back IO wise, first let me know the integrated and padded back IO, which has been punctured and now serves as an exhaust for the VRM. Another little innovation uh, when compared to the Z790 Master Twin and a nice imaginative thermal improvement, I want to say. Does it really make a whole lot of difference? Hard to tell, but hey, I do like the effort. Now, starting from the left, we have our accessible troubleshooting features, namely a clear CMOS and a bias button for a CPU less bias update. Our newly introduced Wi-Fi 7, which really brings Wi-Fi latency nose to nose with cabled internet and pushes our speeds up to a commanding 10 gigabit per second. Our mosaic of USB outputs totalizing no less than 150 gigabits worth of bandwidth, including three nice 20 gigabit Type-C you won't see that every day. A display output for our integrated graphic, a very premium speed modulated 10 gigabit E LAN plug, which really places the Master X above its natural competition on the connectivity uh, side of things. Um, I mean, I just reviewed the C790 uh, Maximus Dark Hero uh, a couple weeks ago, and it only gave us a 2.5 gigabit classic search protected LAN, which was very, uh, um, disappointing. So yeah, I told you Asus, this would come and haunt you again. And finally, an aging yet very safe ALC1220 audio codec from Realtek, serviced by well, only 300 microfarads worth of capacitors, but nothing to worry about since it is also filtered by film-based WEMA capacitors, which will provide about the best recording setup and integrated solution you could hope for. I, I did call this safe as a codec because they are mounting criticisms, uh, blaming the Realtek all digital 4080 and 4082 codec solutions uh, for random audio disconnects. So I understand why some refresh motherboards did revert back to that, uh, well, very premium and still very worthy legacy solution. Overall, I do love uh, the bandwidth abundance of this back IO. The connectivity is simply the best you could hope for. I mean, really? And we did 
even see a little bit of innovative, you know, effort uh, uh, on the Bakayo, which is extremely rare to see. I don't think I've ever seen uh, the Bakayo receiving any kind of imaginating, imaginative uh, effort. So yeah, um, solid nine here. Nine out of 10, very, very, very big kudos back iOS to gigabyte. Now, front panel connector wise, well, uh, apart from the classic plugs, we do have a 20 gigabit type C, pretty fancy, and an additional Thunderbolt 4 card connector for some serious bandwidth upgrade. Very nice and premium bandwidth companion to our already uh, stunning back IO. Cooling wise, well, this is where things get a little tricky for me. Again, we have nine fan connectors, four of which are water pump compatible, and I would be very happy and glad to see all of those. But coming from a single GPU support, I find it a bit over the top. And again, I, I kind of see it as a, you know, try, uh, trying to advertise something the motherboard cannot do. Um, I fail to see the benefits of having that many connectors in short, and especially when I'm paying for it. In addition, no flow sensors. So if you're going toward a dual custom water cooling loop, it would be an unperfect support at best. Finally, troubleshooting wise, we do have everything of 500 bucks, motherboards and ties, meaning our first aid easy debugger for a very lazy try to guide your troubleshooting issues into the right direction, kinda. But more importantly, we do have an error code screen, which will refine that quest to the very reason why this thing refuses to pleasure your gaming needs. Other than that, we got our nice power and reset salted buttons, as well as the already mentioned clear CMOS and flashback button seen on the back IO. Now, in conclusion, the Z790 Hours Master X will cost you about 550 bucks before taxes, which is a solid 100 premium over its very similar Z790 Hours Master. Now, is that Benjamin at all worth it? Short answer? No. For one, the VRMs are near identical and the evolution way too gradual. Uh, apart from the Wi-Fi 7 upgrade, I could not see why on earth I'd spend a hundred bucks for what is sensibly the very same motherboard we had availed to us a full year ago. Now, on its own merits um, and compared to its natural competition, is it a viable choice, you may ask? Well, the same answer applies, I'm afraid. Despite benefiting from an extremely robust, eye-pleasing design and uh, an overcharge and what might be one of the most powerful VRMs out there, it still fails in a couple of key aspects. It does not propose a dual GPU support the ROG Maximus Z790 Hero proposes. And in addition, even though I could not detect any obvious heat bleeding, seeing power stages placed below an M.2 solid state drive thermal floor really alarmed me. And I, and I do regard this as a serious design flow. So, uh, all things considered, and well, unless obviously you find this motherboard at below $400, I have to stay honest here and say, I am not really certain that this is where you money want to spend its holiday season. That was, that was a pretty nice holiday season. Trick wording. I'm sorry, Gigabyte.